Hello everybody and welcome back to another Switch Up story time. And what are we reading, Joe? George's Marvellous Medicine. George's Marvellous Medicine and this is chapter 10, A Crane for Grandma. George has given his Marvellous Medicine to Grandma and she's grown so big, she's grown up through the roof, hasn't she? Didn't his dad say like that he wanted... To, um, He's given it to the, the, animals. the animals, hasn't he? And all the animals have grown big. Um, but his grandma's still <laughs> stuck in the roof and she can't get out. So this is a crane for grandma. Grandma, from high up on the rooftop, could see everything that was going on and she didn't like what she saw. She wanted to be the centre of attention and no one was taking the slightest bit of notice of her. George and Mr Cranky were running round getting excited about the enormous animals. Mrs Cranky was washing up and Grandma was all alone on the rooftop. Hey you, she yelled. George, get me a cup of tea this minute, you idle little beast. Don't listen to the old goat, Mr Cranky said. She's stuck where she is and it's a good thing too. But we can't leave her up there, Dad, George said. What if it rains? George! Grandma yelled. Oh, you horrible little boy. You disgusting little worm. Fetch me a cup of tea at once and a slice of cake. Well, we'll have to get her out, Dad. George said. She won't give us any peace if we don't. Mrs Cranky came outside and she agreed with George. She's my own mother, she said. She's a pain in the neck, Mr Cranky said. I don't care, Mrs Cranky said. I'm not leaving my own mother sticking up through the roof for the rest of her life. So in the end, Mr Cranky telephoned the crane company and asked them to send their biggest crane out to the house at once. The crane arrived an hour later. The crane men climbed up on the roof and put ropes under Grandma's arms and then she was lifted right through the roof. In a way, the medicine had done Grandma good. It had not made her any less grumpy or bad-tempered, but it seemed to have cured all her aches and pains, and she was suddenly as frisky as a ferret. As soon as the crane had lowered her back to the ground, she ran over to George's huge pony, Jack Frost, and jumped on its back. This ancient old hag, who was now as tall as a house, galloped around the farm on the gigantic pony, jumping over trees and shouting, out of my way! Clear the decks! Stand back, all you miserable midgets, or I'll trample you to death! And other silly things like that. But because Grandma was now much too tall to get back in the house, she had to sleep that night in the hay barn with the mice and the rats. That doesn't look very nice, does it? No. That's the end of that chapter. Should we do another chapter? Because that was a quick one, wasn't it? Yeah, go on. Go on then. This one's Mr Cranky's great idea. The next day, George's father came down to breakfast in a state of great excitement. I've been awake all night thinking about it, he cried. About what, Dad? About your marvellous medicine, of course. We can't stop now, boy. We must start making more of it, more and more. The giant saucepan had been completely emptied the day before because there had been so many sheep and pigs to be fed. But why do we need more, Dad? George asked. We've done all our own animals and we've made Grandma feel as frisky as a ferret, even though she does have to sleep in the barn. My dear boy, we need barrels and barrels of it, tons and tons. Then we'll sell it to every farmer in the world so they can all have giant animals. We'll build a marvellous medicine factory and sell the stuff in bottles, five pounds a time. We'll be rich and you'll become famous. But wait a minute, Dad. George said. There's no waiting, cried Mr Cranky, working himself up into a state. Don't you understand? This tremendous invention of yours is going to do to the world Nobody will ever go hungry again. Why won't they? Because one giant cow will give 50 buckets of milk a day, cried Mr Cranky. One giant chicken will make a 100 fried chicken dinners 
and one giant pig will give you a thousand pork chops. It'll be tremendous, my dear boy. It'll be fantastic. It'll change the world. But wait a minute, Dad, George said again. Don't keep saying wait a minute. There isn't a minute to wait. We must get cracking at once. Do calm down, my dear, Mrs Cranky said, and stop putting marmalade on your cornflakes. The egg with my cornflakes, cried Mr Cranky. Come on, George, let's get going. And the first thing we'll do is make one more saucepan as a tester. But, Dad, said little George, the trouble is... There won't be any trouble, my boy, cried Mr Cranky. How can there possibly be any trouble? All you've got to do is put the same stuff into the saucepan that you did yesterday. I'll write down each and every item. That's how we'll get the magic recipe. But, Dad, George said, please listen to me. Why don't you listen to him, Mrs Cranky said. The boy's trying to tell you something. But Mr Cranky was too excited to listen to anyone. And then, he cried, when the new mixture's ready, we'll test it out on an old end, just to make sure we've got it right. And after that, we'll shout hooray and build the giant factory. But Dad... Come on then, what is it you want to say? I can't possibly remember all the hundreds of things I put into the saucepan to make the medicine. Of course you can, my dear boy. I'll help you. I'll jog your memory. You'll get it in the end, you see, if you don't. Now then, what was the very first thing you put in? I went up to the bathroom first, George said. I used a lot of things in the bathroom and on Mummy's on, on Mummy's dressing table. Come on then, cried Mr Kitty Cranky. Up we go to the bathroom. When they got there, they found, of course, a whole lot of empty tubes and empty aerosols and empty bottles. That's great. That tells us exactly what you used. If anything's empty, it means you used it. So Mr Cranky started making a list of everything that was empty in the bathroom. They went to Mrs Cranky's dressing table. A box of powder, Mr Cranky said, writing it down. Helga's air set. Flowers of turnips perfume, terrific. This is going to be easy. But where did you go next? To the laundry room, George said. But are you sure you haven't missed anything out up here, Dad? That's up to you, my boy, have I? I don't think so. So down they went to the laundry room and once again, Mr Cranky wrote down the names of all the empty bottles and cans. My goodness me, what a mass of stuff you used, he cried. It's no wonder it did magic things. Is that the lot? No, Dad, it's not, George said. And he led his dad to the shed where the animal medicines were kept and showed him five big empty bottles. Anything else, Mr Cranky asked. Little George scratched his head and thought and thought that he couldn't remember having put anything else in. Mr Killy Cranky drove down to the village and bought new bottles and tubes and cans of everything on his list. He then went to the vet and got a fresh supply of all the animal medicines. Now show me how you did it, George, he said. Come along, show me exactly how you mix them all together. Dun, dun, dun. George's Marvellous Medicine, number two, is the next chapter. And we hope you'll join us next time. Bye, bye, bye.